How are we doing everybody? It's Pop Music Freak. I am back with another song fact video. Count <laughs> it's a countdown of my 1000 favorite songs of all time. We are up to 948. It's sadly ironic that this so happens to be the day after the death of a superstar from the 70s and 80s. I'm talking about Olivia Newton-John. What's coincidental to me, what's also pretty wild, is number 948. Um, her date of birth was September 1948. <laughs> pretty wild coincidence that we're at this point in the countdown, don't you think? Um, it is the biggest hit. The biggest hit she ever had. A couple more of her songs are going to be a little bit higher on this 1000 list. But here at 948, here she is, Olivia Newton-John, with Physical. Number 948 on the list. Her biggest hit spent an incredible 10 straight weeks at number one in December of starting, actually starting November 28th of 81. The last five weeks of 81 and the first five weeks, actually the first four weeks of 1982. Uh, so, what an incredible run she had indeed. As an artist, she had many, many hits, as we all know. Those of us who were young back in those days when she was really at, at her peak popularity, uh, we all respect her vocal talent and, and her beauty and her personality. She just seemed to be such a down-to-earth, you know, um, lady next door kind of kind of personality. She seemed to be a lot of fun. And uh, from what a lot of people had said that were really on the inside and knew her well, is that she was very straightforward human being. Uh, she didn't act like a superstar, <laughs> you know, typically. So, of all the things, no one, no one's ever really said anything bad about her. And you, all you can do is respect what she had fought, the battle she fought over the last thirty years with her health. Uh, so, those of you that are young may not weren't around when she was really popular and really on top of the charts. But uh, I think even you can tell the type of person that she was. She was different, different in a lot of ways. And uh, her, enough chat about her. Let's talk about her song, the biggest hit she ever had. The number one song, according to Billboard, for the whole decade of the 1980s. Ten weeks at number one. Let's talk about what the song was about and what was involved. I found out some new stuff about this song today looking at, at this information that I have on her song facts. Okay? Anyway, let's get to it. Physical is a song recorded by British-Australian singer Olivia Newton-John for her 1981 11th studio album of the same name. It was released as the album's lead single on 28th of, the 28th of September 1981. The song was produced by John Farah and written by Steve Kipner and Terry Shattuck, who had originally intended to offer this song to Rod Stewart. Uh, the song had also been offered to Tina Turner, by her manager, Roger Davies, but when Turner declined, Davies gave the song to Olivia Newton-John, another of his clients. Physical was an immediate smash hit, shipping two million copies in the United States, where it was certified platinum by the RIAA, and spent ten weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Physical ultimately became Newton-John's biggest hit and cemented her legacy as a pop superstar, a journey that began when she crossed over from her earlier country pop roots. The song's suggestive lyrics, uh, which even caused it to be banned in some markets like Utah, uh, helped change Newton-John's long-standing clean-cut image, replacing it with a sexy, assertive persona that was strengthened with follow-up hits such as Make a Move on Me, Twist of Fate, and Soul Kiss. Um, physical, originally Let's Get Physical, was written by Terry Shattuck and Newton-John's longtime friend Steve Kipner, and initially was intended for a macho male rock figure like Rod Stewart, according to Kipner. Uh, when Newton-John's then-manager Lee Kramer accidentally heard the demo, he immediately sent the song to her, but initially she did not want to release the song because she thought it was too cheeky. Uh, it was the first of several Newton-John releases written by Kipner. The song's guitar solo was performed by Steve Lukather, best known as a founding member of the American rock band Toto. Physical was written in the key of E minor, with Newton-John's vocal range spanning from A3 to E5. 
Uh, reception. <laughs> Physical was described by Mark Allen of Smash Hits as one of the most successful career revivers in living memory. It is the most successful single of Newton John's career and became her fifth and last number one single on the Billboard Hot 100. Physical stayed for 10 weeks at the top of the Hot 100 from November 21st, 1981 through January 23rd, 1982, out of a total of 26 weeks on the charts. It was the largest permanence at the time, becoming the most successful song on the Billboard chart in the 1980s. The song was very controversial due to the implied sexual content, being innovative and somewhat provocative for the time. Physical has received positive reviews from music critics since release, with some of them calling it good-natured, sexy, and an 80s gem. The song was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and won the Billboard Award for Top Pop Single. Might be worth noting that it held off uh, Farner's Waiting for a Girl Like You, the song that would be pretty much their biggest hit at, up to the time, uh, nine of the ten weeks. That physical was number one, Waiting for a Girl Like You was number two. So then on January 30th, 1982, I Can't Go For That No Can Do by Daryl Hall and John Oates jumped over both songs and reached number one. Where And uh, Waiting for a Girl Like You held at number two for the tenth week, which was a record that was tied by um, Missy Elliott's Work It in 2002-2003. Um, just, just for those of you that want to know the chart situation there, uh, what's funny also is that Hall & Oates were number one before physical and number one after physical, as Private Eyes was number one for two weeks, two weeks before physical reached number one. Uh, now, uh, with all that tr tremendous success, uh, surprisingly, in the UK, it wasn't as big of a hit, only going to number seven on the charts at the end of 1981. Uh, but uh, there were other countries around the world that jumped all over this song, as we'll go through the different chart uh, chart peaks in different countries. All right. Now, of course, a lot of people can never forget the video. That the video was so much fun. It was directed by Brian Grant. Featured Olivia Newton-John in a tight leotard trying to make several overweight men lose weight. Uh, the men fail comically, and Newton-John leaves the room to take a shower. When the men work out on their own, they suddenly transform into muscular, attractive men. A stylistic shot shows one muscular man glancing at his overweight self in the mirror. Uh, Newton-John is shocked when she returns and starts to flirt with them. Two of the men secretly go out holding hands, implying, I guess, that they were gay. Um, this surprises Newton John, as does the sight of two more of the men leaving with their arms around each other. Finally, she finds that the last of the overweight men is heterosexual, and they go off to play tennis together. <laughs> fun, fun stuff, indeed. Okay, as for the legacy of this song, uh, Billboard ranked physical number six on its all time top 100 list, number one on its top 50 sexiest songs of all time list and number one on its top 100 songs of the 80s list. Uh, so, that's about it. Now, going over the personnel who played on the song, of course, Olivia sang lead and backing vocals. John Farrah played guitar and sang backing vocals. Steve Lukather, again, from Toto, uh, was played a guitar solo. Uh, David Hungate played bass. Uh, Bill Cuomo pro played the Prophet 5, whatever that is. Uh, Robert Blass played keyboards. Uh, Carlos Vega, drums and percussion. Uh, Lenny Castro also on percussion and uh, Gary Herbig on the horns. So there we go. Uh, as for chart rankings, let's look. It also hit number one in Australia, number one in Belgium, number one in Canada, number one in New Zealand, number one in Switzerland, and number one on the Cashbox Top 100 along with Billboard. Uh, on the dance chart, it got to number 22 in the US. On the soul chart, it got to number 28 on the R&B chart. Wow, I didn't know that. That's something. Uh, West Germany, it hit number four. Uh, what else we got? Portugal, number two. Brazil, number two. Ireland, number four. Netherlands, number four. But yeah, UK, it only got to number seven. Didn't seem to be as cool to, I guess, to the UK. Uh, and throughout Europe, I mean, basically charted everywhere in Europe. Um, as for year-end charts, uh, Cashbox ranked at number six for 1981. Cashbox usually ranks everything up till the end of December. Um, 82 is when uh, Billboard ranked at number one for the year. And Brazil is number two for the year in 82 uh, for the decade. Number one for the decade, beating out 
What was number two, you're wondering? For the 19, um, the 1980s, what was the number two song of the 80s? Well, it was Betty Davis Eyes, that's right. Betty Davis Eyes was number two. Kim Carnes, just speeding out Endless Love, Diana Ross and Lana Rich for number, for number two. So, Endless Love was number three. And Every Breath to Take by the Police was number four for the 80s, in case you're wondering. Uh, and on the all-time chart, Billboard Hot 100, it was ranked number 10 when they originally came out with that first uh, Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1998. I think now, at this point, it's slipped down. It's around number 13 or 14 at this point in time. Uh, for women, though, under Women's Hot 100, it was ranked number two of all time, bef behind uh, How Do I Live by Lee and Rhymes. Now it's number three, as um, Levitating by Dua Lipa is now number two all time for women, female artists. So there we are. That's the story. That's the song facts of one of the biggest hits of all time by a lady that we're all mourning the loss of, um, whose talent and influence on many artists that came after cannot be understated. You ask, you ask anybody from Taylor Swift to uh, anyone that tried to put on a more provocative, sexy image later in their careers, talk to the Sheena Easton's, the, um, the Britney Spears, and artists of like that, and many of the female artists that are popular today, are all can nod and give thanks that someone as influential as Olivia Newton-John came along before them. So, anyway, I'll get off the soapbox now. Okay, so that's number 948. The uh, link to the video is going to be in my description on, the, in, on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe, please like the video, please hit that bell to let you know when the next ones are coming out. I think this is my third one I put out today. I think I'm going to aim to try and do three a day. All right, so we have some more good ones coming up every day. So thanks for watching. Peace and love to all of you. Thank you.